But I realized that my DILR set was not optimal. I set a target of attempting 15, 13 to 15 questions with maximum accuracy, but I was able to attempt only 12. So I realized I had to quickly change my strategy for quants and go for a more conservative approach where I was trying to minimize the risk rather than taking more risk and trying to maximize my score. Since I'm still a fresher and still in college, they expected me to be completely sure of what I've learned in my college as well as why I'm doing an MBA. So the questions were targeted around what I've done in my college and where I see myself in the future. I'm Aditya Ravi. I did my 10th standard from Silicon City Academy in Bangalore, where I scored about 93.8%. I then went on to do commerce from Jain PUC, where I scored 98% in 2021. I then joined Jain University to do my BCom with finance and business analytics, and I will be graduating in April 2024. From my second year, an MBA seemed like the most logical continuation of my studies and also the perfect path for me to achieve my goals. I also did not know if for sure at that point if I would clear CAT in my first annum. So my idea was to give in my 100%, prepare to the best possible extent and try CAT in 2023. And if I did not clear it, use it as a learning experience to go forward in the future. I started my CAT preparation roughly 12 months before my CAT exam. Around this time, my focus was not exactly on the paper structure itself, but rather to develop my skills in all three of the sections. So I regularly started reading the newspaper, covering the New York Times games such as Wordle and Connections, downloading logical puzzle games on my phone, and also working on quant. Being a non-engineer is generally considered as a big disadvantage for people in the quant section, and I also felt the same. During my mocks, I've ranged from scores from minus three up to 39, and it was always a very volatile process where I found some concepts such as arithmetic and modern math a little simple, but algebra and geometry were very difficult for me. The key to improve my score in quants was to work towards it in a strategic manner. I had to first identify my areas of weaknesses and identify why I found these particular areas difficult. Furthermore, I also came to an understanding that to do well in CAT, I did not have to attempt all the questions that were present in the quant paper. Rather, I just had to attempt about 50 to 60 percent of the questions. So I managed to identify the areas of strength, which was arithmetic and modern maths. And I was more than open to leaving questions on geometry and algebra, as I felt that this would just act as a maximizer to my score rather than a basic necessity to clear the cutoffs. Coming to my actual CAT examination itself, I had the morning slot where, which was what I wanted because it would give me the rest of the day to consider how I'd done in the test and also cool myself off. Starting off with the VARC section, I had developed a habit of starting with the verbal ability questions in order to build my confidence and get used to putting together small sentences and then going for the bigger passages. I stuck with the strategy and I felt it served me quite well. I was able to quite comfortably cover the VA questions in about 7 minutes and move on to the reading passages which took me about 33 minutes to cover three passages which completely aligned with my strategy. Building on from this confidence, I moved on to the DILR section. The DILR section was a little difficult and because all four sets had few confusing elements in them. I started off with a set which had references to mean, median and mode which I felt would be relatively easier and I was able to attempt three questions in less than 10 minutes. I saw this as a good sign, and but I realized that the next two questions had some additional information which would take me a lot more time to compute. So I decided to leave it apart for a while and instead move on to the other sets, which I found a little difficult but I was able to crack after some effort. But I realized that my DILR set was not optimal. I'd set a target of attempting 15, 13 to 15 questions with maximum accuracy, but I was able to attempt only 12. So I realized I had to quickly change my strategy for quants and go for a more conservative approach where I was trying to minimize the risk rather than taking more risk and trying to maximize my score. During my practice, I used to attempt between 12 to 16 questions in quant and try to get around 14 of 10 to 14 correct. Here I realized I do not want to take the same amount of risk. So I attempted only 10 questions in quant and try to get as much as possible correct. And in the final result, I was able to get eight correct and the only two that I got wrong were theta questions. So I did not actually suffer from any negative marking over there. There is a lot of free content available on the internet which gives you quality resources to adequately prepare for the CAT exam, such as mocks and material for preparation. I used to often go to Kraku and uh, Inside IIM for their sectional mocks as well as the complete paper mocks. I felt sectional mocks would help me target my weaknesses in a particular section and address them individually, while the whole mocks helped me simulate what I would actually do in the real paper. Apart from that, I also watched a lot of YouTube videos to cover my deficiencies in the quant section. This included channels such as MBA Patashala, again Kraku, Unacademy and Roda, which were all very good channels with great explanations and that helped me understand the conceptual fundamentals which 
then uh, allowed me to analyze better shortcuts and tricks to perform the questions. Based on my CAT percentile, I realized that I had a good chance to get calls from some of the best IIMs such as Ahmedabad, Bangalore, Calcutta, as well as Lucknow, Koikor, Indore, uh, and as well as other colleges such as SPJ, MDI, FMS, etc. All these interviews are unique experiences and I cannot say that two experiences have been exactly identical or even similar to one another. If I had to pick out unique experiences, one of them would definitely be my Koi Code experience. In Koi Code, I went in to a very light-hearted at atmosphere where they were willing to crack jokes and look at the lighter side of things. They also dived a lot into my extracurriculars. I, since I mentioned that I'm a football writer and I've been writing for two websites for a, over a period of two years, they asked me a lot of questions based on my work there rather than focusing on my academics. On the other hand, Colleges such as IIM Lucknow trended to focus more on my academics since I'm still a fresher and still in college. They expected me to be completely sure of what I've learned in my college as well as why I'm doing an MBA. So the questions were targeted around what I've done in my college and where I see myself in the future. There were also other questions in IIM Ahmedabad which tested my general awareness, how quickly I could react to being put in an uncomfortable situation. This involved asking me questions about my college, about my teachers, whether there's a good student-teacher ratio, etc., which are not a typical line of questioning, but rather tested how quickly I'm able to think, whether I'm able to stick to my answers and give it proper reasoning. Based on my experiences, if I had to give tips to people who are going to write CAD next year and hoping to get interviews next year, I would say that you have to look at your life as a story. What drove you to take your academic choices? What drove you towards a particular field? Understand what have you learned from it? Why did you do it? And what were some challenges you faced? What were some unique experiences you had there which you may not have got elsewhere? The second thing is to be aware of what is happening around the world and how it affects you, your country, your state, your city, whatever. Number three is to also explore your interests. So it's not enough to be an expert in one field and understand what is happening in only one field. Rather, with so much information available to us today for free, it is important to make note of what is happening around the world, be updated in current affairs, and also have a deeper understanding over what you see on the internet or what comes in newspapers. These are the three main tips I would give to anyone.